Hello, dear viewers, Andrew LaPamardo again, and today, we're going to be talking about what happened to Pumpkinhead after the movie. Ever since Peter Block, more popularly known as the executive producer of the Saw film franchise, made it official about a reboot of the Pumpkinhead film series in the works, fans of the horror movie franchise have been exhilarated. From having the original Pumpkinhead movie getting released way back in 1988, to having a direct-to-video sequel, Pumpkinhead 2. Blood Wings. In 1994, the franchise also had two made-for-television slasher horror drama flicks, Pumpkinhead Ashes to Ashes in 2006 and Pumpkinhead Blood Feud in 2007. And let's not miss out on the comic book series titled Pumpkinhead, The Rites of Exorcism which was published by the American comic book and manga publisher Dark Horse Comics in 1993. The comic was initially meant to be a miniseries, having four issues. Instead, only two parts were published, with the second issue featuring a cliffhanger ending, a winged pumpkin head to be more precise. And to think, it all started because of a poem by Ed Justin called Pumpkinhead. Who would have imagined, right? Anyway, coming back to the franchise, American comic book publisher Dynamite Entertainment took things to the next level by publishing a five-issue limited series in 2018 that boasted Cullen Bunn as the writer and Blackie Shepard as the illustrator. While it's hard to believe that there's anyone left out there who has not heard of Pumpkinhead, we'd like not to take chances. For those of you who are oblivious to this creature, the Eponius Demon happens to be a gargantuan gangling beast that can be summoned by a person who is on the lookout for revenge. The demonic monster personifies the hatred of the person who has summoned him in the first place, as well as that person's wish for revenge. This results in the offenders getting marked for death, and no matter where they go or hide themselves, Pumpkinhead will hunt them down. The goal of this revenge demon is to make sure that his targeted victims suffer painful deaths. He is quite unforgiving in that way. Plus, his sadistic nature will literally make him go out of his way to make sure that the death sentence that he bestows upon his targets are nothing short of gruesome in every possible manner. Mind you, the demon is quite particular about his killings. He will not touch people that are not his targets but God help them if they even make the mistake of trying to stop him. Go, Tommy! Get the hell out of here! Destroy you! It goes without saying that the demonic monster here is more like a legend in his town, and literally every dweller is aware of his presence. Out of the four films in the franchise, Stan Winston's 1988 Pumpkinhead, or in other words, the first movie in the franchise, has been notably superior than the rest of the films, with a colossal cult following. Jeff Burr's 1994 Pumpkinhead 2 Blood Wings is a direct-to-video sequel to the original movie and is the perfect example of a surreal vengeance tale carrying on with the concept and themes that the original movie had introduced to its viewers. The third and fourth installment in the franchise unexpectedly turned out pretty effective and decent, given that they very methodically try making connections with the 1988 initial release. You might want to check out our channel, Marvelous Videos. We do have a fantastic breakdown of the entire Pumpkinhead franchise there. But gear yourselves up for today's video, where we are going to explore Pumpkinhead beyond the movies. We are going to talk about Dynamite Entertainment's Pumpkinhead Limited series, all five issues in detail. Before we get into the explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, Please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click from you, but means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's begin. The Demon of Vengeance has awakened. Pumpkinhead, issue number one. The readers are taken to Bradley Mountain, and the time frame cannot be deciphered. But what we do know is that it's definitely occurring in the past. It is nighttime, 
and we see a cottage. Inside happens to be a bunch of small girls paying close attention to what is being told to them by an old lady, who seems more like a witch. She is telling them that the time has finally arrived for the children to make the right powerful choice. The witch tells them to go to Razorback Holler, where they will find graves that will call them. She commands them to find their demon and the children set off on their journey. On the way, one of the girls called Haggis gets bullied by another girl called Nettie, telling her to be fast or she will end up getting the leftovers like always. Haggis, in due course, finds what she is looking for. Cut to present, there has been a hit and run case, and there are two officers investigating the matter. While Sheriff Andy Ferris still has not been able to get a clue on who might be behind the accident, Officer Darrell fills in about the hillbillies who apparently don't have much faith in the law. While speaking about their concerns regarding vigilante justice, Bunt, one of the locked up convicts, tells the duo that it has to come down to revenge, and whoever has killed the children will get what they rightfully deserve. Of course, Bunt is not taken seriously, but he keeps murmuring that he knows what's going to happen. The Demon of Vengeance has been summoned, and he will not stop until he serves his purpose, and anyone who even thinks of stopping him is bound to meet the same fate just like his targeted victims. The readers finally get to catch a glimpse of the hidden, wrecked car that still has blood on it. The whole place seems to be guarded by a bunch of heavily armed men. It does not take one long to comprehend that the person accountable for the death of the girls is being guarded inside. And while Clayton wants to leave, he is told by a certain Lucas Bellworth that he is his responsibility and will be kept safe till the former's father comes to get him. In the meantime, Ernst Kincaid pays Haggis a visit at Black Ridge, and the latter tells him to bring inside the dead bodies of his grandchildren and put them on a table. She further tells him that she already knew that he would be paying her a visit, and if he wanted her to help him out, he had to utter the words himself. No points for guessing that Kincaid had revenge on his mind. Back at the police station, Daryl tells Sheriff Andy to come with him and follow up on a lead that he has finally managed to lay his hands on. That's when Andy catches the attention of a few children, and she goes to them in hopes of being able to get some clarity on the case. But the children refuse to tell her anything, and go to extents of saying that none of them were even present there when the accident took place. So much so that the sheriff is eventually asked to mind her own business. Back at the Backwoods crime family, it has been four days and Clayton's father still has not come to take him. Clayton is all the more agitated, and his actions have been putting Lucas on edge. Outside, a huge roar is heard, coming from the garage, and two of the armed men go inside to investigate. The duo is shocked beyond words to see what is standing in front of them. The shadow of a terrifying, gigantic monster can be seen. With gunshots being heard in the garage, the rest of the armed men go inside only to find a mutilated, bloodied body of one of the men lying on the covered bonnet of the car. But what appears in front of them is even more petrifying. A huge demonic creature that is entirely hairless, has an exceedingly large head with plenty of lumps, pale white eyes, and a very large mouth with pointed teeth. The four-fingered clawed hands and barbed tail are his primary weapons, and it is absolutely horrifying to see him clawing at the lifeless body of one of the armed men like that. Pumpkinhead, issue number two. Vengeance does come with a terrible price, and Ernst Kincaid experiences the gruesome murders one by one through the monster's eyes. With the rest of the armed men attacking Pumpkinhead with a shower of heavy bullets, the monster's body seems impervious against them, and it goes without saying that he overpowers them with ease. Clayton, having heard the shooting stop, assumes that the men outside must have killed whoever was out there, but immediately gets proved wrong when the body of a mauled dog is hurled towards him that comes crashing right through the window. Pumpkinhead appears, and Bedelia recognizes the monster at once. The horrified trio barely manage to get themselves out of the house and into the truck to escape. Bedelia tells Clayton that the beast has been summoned by the Kincaids because Clayton killed their children and drove off. Pumpkinhead effortlessly manages to jump on the roof of the truck. All set to ambush Clayton, but Lucas manages to hit the brakes fast enough to make the creature topple and hit the ground. With Clayton thinking that they have lost the monster, 
Bedelia breaks to him the news that the monster will only stop after he is done killing his marked victims, or if he dies in the first place. The next morning, while arresting one of the locals in town for possessing drugs, Andy and Daryl get a tip from the locals about the people he got the pills from. On the other hand, Lucas, Bedelia, and Clayton have made it to Nettie's house, who initially refuses to help them out. Post hearing about the involvement of her sister, Haggis, and how she has marked each of them by summoning Pumpkinhead, Nettie lets them in. As for Andy and Daryl, they have reached the massacre site by then, and are absolutely shocked to see the dead body count. While the duo realizes that the corpses that lay ahead of them have all been the men of Lucas Bellworth, but what really appalls them is the solitary fact that there aren't any bullet marks or wounds on the bodies. While investigating, Andy also chances upon the hidden car that's parked there. The duo quickly make their way back to Bunt and offer him a bottle to know more about his opinions on the hit and run case, thinking he might actually be able to help them out. Meanwhile, Nettie has also called upon the other sisters. The others ask her if Haggis will be joining them, and Nettie confirms that she will not. She further tells them that they have been told to work against their estranged sister. Highlighting on elements like pride, greed, envy, lust, and sloth, the sisters offer their effigies to the fire that they had brought along with them. What emerges in front of them are five dreadful demons out of each of the sins. Pumpkinhead, issue number three. Post the revelations by Bunt, Sheriff Andy, along with Deputy Daryl and Bunt, are on the hunt for the demonic monster. While Daryl has his reservations, Andy is determined to get to the crux of the matter. They stop by at the Kincaid residency to ask a few questions. Of course, they are greeted with the usual hostility, but a loud scream is heard coming from inside. The sheriff goes inside to see Ernst Kincaid, his eyes glowing at the mere thought of how everything will be taken care of that night. Meanwhile, Bedelia, Lucas, and Clayton have taken refuge somewhere safe when they hear a loud growling noise outside. Dark silhouette of Pumpkinhead can be seen making his way craftily on top of the roof, and within seconds, the monster rips apart the roof, hissing at his victims. But what Pumpkinhead was not aware of was the supernatural backup plan of the Bellworths, and the fact that a bunch of infernal demons, each raised from the sins of man, have already been summoned to tackle him. What follows is an intense battle amongst the demons each taking their turn to overpower Pumpkinhead. It is also known here that these demons are not only for the revenge demon, they are here to tackle every enemy of the Bellworth family. Back at the Kincaid residency, Ernst Kincaid confesses to having summoned Pumpkinhead and also tells the sheriff how the Bellworths have unleashed hell into their world. It is precisely then when the police truck gets lifted up by one of the demons and Bunt makes it back to the house just in time to alert the others. The demon makes his way inside the Kincaid home. Meanwhile, Pumpkinhead is still in the midst of a very heated battle against the other demons, and one can hardly make out what the end result will be. As for Bedelia, she is seen telling Clayton and Lucas that Pumpkinhead will have further important matters to attend to post his combat against the demons. If her words are to be paid heed to, Haggis is seen sitting by herself near the fireplace in her cottage, when she hears a sudden creak. Alerted, she goes outside to see what the matter is, and one can clearly see a demon waiting to leap on her from above the roof. Pumpkinhead, issue number four. The trio of Lucas, Bedelia, and Clayton manage to lay their hands on the car keys of their neighbor. Haggis, on the other hand, having sniffed the trouble that her sisters have caused, tries escaping when she gets stopped by the demon that was lurking on her roof earlier. But just when she is about to get attacked by it, Pumpkinhead comes to her rescue. Both the demons are literally on top of each other, trying their best to outdo one another. Haggis is shocked by what her sisters have done. The demons are clearly not meant to roam around all at the same time. As for the demon back at the Kincaid residency, it attacks one of the members of the Kincaid family and kills him in front of everyone. The actions of the demon horrify everyone, especially the children for that matter. Daryl, seeing no other option left, starts shooting at the demon. Coming back to the battle that concerns Pumpkinhead, he is decapitated when the demon he is fighting against impales him and he lets out a huge shriek. As for Daryl, he is attacked by the demon and ripped apart into two pieces. Sheriff Andy narrowly manages to escape from the house. 
Outside, Bunt realizes that the only way to end the mess that they are all in is by killing the one who has called up the demon in the first place. Or, in other words, Kincaid to be more precise. Bunt is all geared up to kill Kincaid when he gets stopped by Andy and is instead told to take all of them to Haggis. Pumpkinhead, who has managed to rise up again, faces all the five demons together this time. Andy, along with the rest, catches up with Haggis and tells her that her help will be required in order to send back the demons to their respective places. Pumpkinhead issue number five. No points for guessing that an exceedingly deadly fight takes place between Pumpkinhead and the other demons, and with Pumpkinhead getting hurt in the process, Ernst Kincaid cries out in pain too. Andy, unaware, asks Haggis, to which the witch tells them that the demon and Kincaid are linked with each other, and both are one till Pumpkinhead is done serving the purpose. That's when Bunt recalls Ed Harley summoning Pumpkinhead and how both of them felt pain together. He tells them what the only solution is, but Andy stops him right there. The group reaches the Coleman place. Andy breaks into the house, leaves the children under the guard of the Colemans, takes one of their trucks, and continues the journey along with Ernst Kincaid, Haggis, and Bunt. Meanwhile, at the Valley View Motel, Clayton is seen reuniting with his father. It is quite clear that Mr. Reese is absolutely furious by the actions of his son. He chides him and even goes to the extent of hitting him in front of everyone. Bedelia takes credit for herself and her brother for paying a visit to the Covens, and calling up on the other sins to tackle Pumpkinhead and defend Clayton in the process. Mr. Reese, happy with the service provided by Lucas, even offers him to discuss some more business before leaving. As for Andy and the group, they reach the house of the other sisters. Andy decides to do all the talking, and Haggis tells her the difference about the demon that she had called for and the ones that her sisters did. She tells her vengeance is bound to the blood and flesh of the person who called for it, and how it cannot be rid of it until it has satisfied itself. Andy knocks at the door only to look back and see the dreadful monster that had attacked them at the Kincaid residency, making its way towards them. Asking the rest of the people to run, Andy shoots open the lock of the house and tells the sisters to send back all the creatures where they came from. Nettie denies knowing what the sheriff is talking about, and this enrages Andy enough to point the gun towards them. Nettie seems unaffected. By then, even Bunt has made his way inside the house with Kincaid. All of a sudden, Haggis leaps from behind and brutally slaughters all of her sisters, telling Andy that it is precisely what she needed to do as to allow Pumpkinhead to complete his task. Her actions immediately led to the death of the other demons, and as for Pumpkinhead, he made his way towards the motel to end what he began. He found his marked victims, and leaped straight into the room through the window. Pumpkinhead brutally kills the guards in no time, and Clayton is more than petrified, almost to the extent of pissing his very own pants. Meanwhile, Kincaid can see everything that's happening. Andy tells Haggis to put a stop to this, but she simply tells her that she cannot. Andy aims her gun towards Kincaid, and Haggis tells her to kill him as it is the only way. Back at the motel, Mr. Reese abandons his son. Lucas, unable to take things further, ends up firing at Pumpkinhead, despite Bedelia warning him that the demon will kill him. This is exactly what happens. Lucas is brutally slaughtered in front of his sister. Next in line is Bedelia herself, followed by Clayton. In the end, as Pumpkinhead drags Clayton outside by his legs and rams the truck on him. As for Andy, she ended up not being able to shoot Kincaid thus allowing Pumpkinhead to fulfill his revenge. Ernst Kincaid burst into flames and Haggis gathers whatever is remaining of Kincaid. While Andy firmly tells Haggis that she would not let her summon Pumpkinhead ever again, the latter simply tells her that vengeance cannot be stopped, no matter how hard one actually tries to. She further tells Andy that she might be able to prevent her from summoning the demon, but someone will somewhere else in the world. Without chains to keep vengeance in control, it will find its way back and end up causing agonizing pain wherever it manifests. Pumpkinhead Movie Remake. Back in 2016, SAR executive producer Peter Block did make things official about a Pumpkinhead reboot that he was developing. That 
brings us to the year 2019, where Block reassured fans of the franchise about the remake that was still in the works and also the fact that further news about the movie would be shared very soon. So here's what we know about it. Block is accountable for co-writing the remake script along with Nate Atkins. He had said this earlier that the movie will have a lot of things taken from the original 1988 flick. Things that are bound to please the fans. Having said that, the remake is not going to be a copy-paste of the original movie. Block is also reported to have plans of making use of practical effects to pay homage to the legendary Stan Winston. Further details about the film have not been divulged yet, nor has there been any information on the cast for that matter. Fans of the franchise, including us, have only been impatiently waiting for further movie updates, and in the hopes of Lance Hendrickson making an appearance or two. So. There is no reason not to look forward to this fresh take on the franchise, one that is inspired by the original. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.